What's up and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about a bunch of drama that unfolded but a lot of questions that all of us had have finally been answered. So first of all, sorry I was gone for like a week. I had some crazy stuff happen. I had finals, um, you know, if anybody out there is also in college or has ever been to college, you know how crazy finals week can get. So that was me like a week and a half ago. And uh, then like I had my last final and then the day after that final was complete I had to get on a plane and go to Colorado to see my family for an early Christmas celebration. So it was like one thing after another. Then I thought I got sick. Ended up I'm not sick. I think that I just need to rest and chillax. So finally I'm back in Las Vegas but while I was gone crazy stuff happened with Zach and Ryan Buell, so let's talk about Zach and Nick first. So I did reach out to the winners of the giveaway. Actually, I picked three people. Um, there was a bunch of people that entered, a bunch of people that wrote me on social media, and I was like, I should just pick three people. I mean, after all, it's Christmas, and I wanted to get some free stuff out to you guys since I've had my channel for a year now. So first place winner was um, Kimmy Craft. So Kim, you're awesome. You already emailed me. Your stuff is in the mail. Anthony won, and so did David Ross. So I have reached out to you guys. If you guys could make sure you email my admin back, and we will get your little presents sent to you on your way and I hope you guys have an awesome holiday. So moving on to this crazy Zach drama, out of nowhere, right? Um, Zach just starts tweeting up a storm about something strange and hopefully I'm posting the tweets right now. So the very first tweet that we saw was Zach three days ago saying, disgusted to see someone using our show name Ghost Adventures to keep promoting shows and himself that we want absolutely nothing to do with. So we can only assume we know who he's talking about, which is Nick. His next tweet was, please for one time in your life do something 100% original. And he retweeted someone that said, I noticed that too. People... People should work for their own reputation, not reduce your reputation with their tainted name. And then the last tweet that he sent out was, anyone out there who gets fired from a job for doing bad things can't use said job as a resume of achievements because of total deception. Wow, what does that mean? Like, what, what are we talking about here? So of course I've talked to you guys about Nick Roth and the whole drama that unfolded with why he left Ghost Adventures. Nick had had some discussion that maybe it was something to do with the demon house. Nick was the first one to kind of be outspoken about the situation and him leaving Ghost Adventures, but nobody gave us any details, so all we could do as fans was kind of speculate. I was actually pretty shocked when I heard that Nick left. I know that Nick was kind of insinuating that he left because of the demon house, that there were some dark haunts going on, he didn't want to bring it around his family, but I couldn't help but really consider that couldn't have been the real raw reason because executive producers don't just quit. So I know you guys know that I've worked in production and the paranormal side of production and if you remember how I've educated you, executive producers are the ones that not only can concept the idea, but actually fund the idea. So if you remember, Zach and Nick were both executive producers of Ghost Adventures when it first came out. Um, Nick has actually talked about it in his book. So the question remains, why would an executive producer quit? That's very highly unlikely but I knew the truth would come out sooner or later. So where does all of this anger from Zach on Twitter come from? I'm assuming that Nick got his second season of Paranormal Lockdown signed with Katrina, and the new intro slash promo talks about 
Katrina from Paranormal State and Nick Groff from Ghost Adventures. He is advertising it that way. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if there's some sort of legal thing going on as we speak where Zach and Nick are roughing it out or even maybe A&E and Travel Channel are fighting or actually I think that A&E um, transferred the show over to TLC because I'm not sure if legally he can use his reputation um, from a different network uh, especially when one said network slash show that is still being aired ghost adventures as we speak there has to be some sort of legality going on right now I assume it's gonna stay private if we hear about it we probably won't know about it till much later but Zach did tell us something that we've been wondering all along which Nick was actually fired from the Ghost Adventures crew. What probably happened? Well, Zach is, you know, spokesman, host, executive producer. I assume there was some sort of a fight between Nick and Zach, and the Travel Channel went to Zach and said, well, if you're not getting along with Nick, we will support you, Zach Bagans, in whatever your decision is um, with moving the show forward because Zach is the said host. He's the front man. They're going to put Zach as the priority with the show. And whatever happened, Travel Channel and Zach agreed to fire Nick. It couldn't have happened without the Travel Channel and the production company. And the decision couldn't have happened without Zach. I don't know what happened with Nick, but I can only assume that there were creative differences. Why do I think there were creative differences? Several reasons. If you notice how the paranormal lockdown layout is with Nick and Katrina versus Ghost Adventures, it's very, very different. Zach still tries to stay very raw. And Nick, it sounds like most recently, if you've seen any of the episodes, that he's maybe taking like a speech class or he has like a speech therapist or something. He's really pronunciating, like almost over pronunciating. He's trying to really create an image slash host for himself or his own character. And you know, I've watched it and I, I just can't get into Paranormal Lockdown. Um, I don't know if it's really bad. I don't think it's bad. I just don't think it's my style. Um, I have concerns with uh, why Nick reacts to things the way he does. I think during the Black Monk House, um, like a, a door opened or something and Nick wasn't very excited. He was just like, oh my god, did you see that? And that makes me nervous because it's like, is this authentic then? Because if I'm in a lockdown, that shit is awesome and I think it's so cool and I'm going to react like Zach and Aaron do, not kind of mellowed out the way Nick did. And I know that's always been Nick's personality. But then another thing I didn't like is during the Black Monk House, wherever they were at, I think Scotland or UK or something, this person had a really heavy, thick accent and they did not use um, any sort of subtitles. And I had a really hard time understanding it. I ended up getting so frustrated I couldn't watch it. Um, I don't really know what is going on as far as the production side of things, but the def there's a definite difference between the way Zack and Ghost Adventures is laid out versus the way Nick has laid out Paranormal Lockdown. The intro is kind of like Sons of Anarchy, and Zack's is always about raw, authentic, in-your-face, demons, darkness, and Nick is just trying to kind of find himself with Katrina. They have the 72 hour lockdown thing. I think there were some serious creative differences. I think that Nick and Zach were probably head to head. I'm executive producer and I'm executive producer and we're gonna go head to head on how we're going to create a functional show and Travel Channel and the production company obviously sided with Zach. Zach and Ghost Adventures still have the number one slot for uh, the most favorited paranormal television reality documentary series on TV as of today. And I mean, it even ended up putting Ghost Hunters out of business. Um, I feel bad for Nick. It's kind of embarrassing if he actually did get fired. Like I said, there's probably some sort of legality thing going on, and I don't know if he was completely right for using his name with Ghost Adventures on his new intro or promoting. Uh, so, whatever happens and is unfolding, we will all eventually hear about it. I have no idea if it had to do with Ghost Adventures and the Demon House or one or the other, but, um, you know, of course I always love Nick. I really do wish he would have stayed with Gak. I really feel like his success was more with Gak, obviously, if he's still using the name. Um, and it's just unfortunate that their friendship crumbled and everything, but 
I'm still a diehard Ghost Adventures fan till the end. All right, the next thing that shocked me um, today I saw, I was on Facebook and Ryan Buell finally posted a public statement. It's not really an apology. I don't know what it is, but I want to read it to you guys and let's chat about what this could depict slash mean. Okay, seven hours ago, today is technically the 23rd of December. To all my fans, my family, my friends, colleagues, passers-by, worst enemies, greatest supporters, and to those who have encouraged and supported me along the way. This letter took a considerably longer amount of time to write than I ever expected. For weeks, I literally stared at a blank page. I have written a few drafts where I would just work on the few sentences. They were pretty bad, even for my standard. I'm kind of lost right now, as in I lost my way. Fumbled in the dark, I didn't want to write this letter. I admit I tried to avoid writing it at every opportunity that presented itself to me. I'm too embarrassed, ashamed, hurt, angry, and defeated, and selfish. And most of all, I'm sorry. I have wanted to run away from any sort of a spotlight for a while now. Getting lost in my own pain was very easy and convenient for me to retreat to, I discovered. Yet the toll has a high price. Those who have paid highest price for my actions are the people that are closest to me. I think I justified my actions by assuming that, that I was making you safer by keeping you away. That is and will remain to be one of my biggest mistakes, and I'll have to carry that around for a very long time. Many of you have looked at me for answers, and sometimes I feel confident enough to volunteer them to you. But at this time in my life, I can tell you that most of my views are shifting as I struggle to find myself. For many years, I've actively shared and witnessed pain from clients and friends all over the country. In a shorter period of time, I experienced a tremendous amount of pain. Looking back now, I admire and encourage those around me for being able to deal with theirs in a way that's healthier than the route that I took. My pain is greater than anyone's, and while I'm guilty of many things, I assure you that my faults were almost never intentional. I never set out to disappoint any of you. In fact, fear of disappointing those around me has always been one of my biggest fears. And with that said, it's obvious I let my fears take control of me. For that reason, I'm taking a step back in order to PRS to move in a healthier direction. I've always said to some of my closest friends, it's a sobering, mind-shattering moment for me to come into terms with the realization that I, the founder of PRS, have become its biggest threat. I cannot right every wrong that I've caused. I know that I will continue to disappoint many of you who, will are, who are already disillusioned, but I promise you that I will try to back up and do my best and build something special. To my friends and family, I'm sorry that we have drifted apart. Many of you are aware that my mother wrote an open letter to fans. On occasion, even when I've been out in public, people ask how we're doing. What I will say is I love my mother like a son should love his mother. I haven't always shown it, especially lately, but it is there. As is my love for my father, brothers, and sisters. I am choosing to take a brighter path largely because I know it will allow me to near you once more. I love you all. I know I haven't addressed a large amount of questions you may have. That is also part of reason why I struggle to write this. There are many, there are lots of questions, a lot of feelings, a lot of rumors, a lot of different perspectives. There's a lot of soul shattering that's been happening here. In time, I'll be able to answer and provide you answers. For now, I just want to take a moment to apologize, tell you that all of you matter a great deal to me, and hope this message finds you healthy and warm. As you know, the holidays are here, and for the past two years, I've deliberately spent Christmas alone. I regretted it each time. This year, know that I will not be alone. In the midst or all pain, anger, damage, I did find some light, or perhaps the light found me. Some truly amazing souls have entered my life and have helped me get uh, to this moment. I may not yet be whole, but I have come to a moment where I realize that I can get out of the dark and there are people waiting on that other side to cheer me on. Thank you, everyone. I will continue reading your messages and hope to return to you soon. Happy holidays and God bless R. Man, I don't know. Um, Ryan Buell, I've always been a fan of Paranormal State. Um, Elfie, if you guys remember her, she follows me on Twitter. I follow her back. I think she's awesome. She was the occult specialist. Um, I don't think what happened to PRS was anyone else's fault other than um, who founded it, which is really sad. I don't think... Um, I think there's a drug issue going on here. I mean, I think that that's pretty obvious. I'm so tired of hearing he's possessed. It's because of the demons. It's because he worked with demons. Oh my God, please, seriously. 
Like, we have to, at some sort, take accountability for who we are as humans. We can't blame um, an invisible entity for our own life choices. I hope that Ryan gets the help he needs. If he's admitting to being in the dark, if that's what he's saying, I think it's just really hard at this point for fans to um, completely forgive him just for the fact that uh, there's been several incidences where they've been taken advantage of and um, that trust is really hard to rebuild, especially when you're a public persona. Um, so I have, you know, the most respect for Ryan for at least coming forward and apologizing. That's the most he's done. So we have to give him credit for that um, and just hope that he finds a healthy path and, and can get back on his feet if, if he can in the industry. Anyways, guys, um, it's been an awesome week. I will have one more video uh, next week for the end of 2016. Thank God, right? Um, Princess Leia just had a heart attack today. I mean, come on, 2016. I think we're all tired of being beat up here. So I will do one more video next week, um, and it will be about my hopes for the paranormal industry for 2017, my dreams for my paranormal career, Career. We will chat about that and I'm still working on comparing apps to actual um, equipment, but it's taking me some time. I didn't realize it was going to be such a process, but I will have that posted um, the beginning of next year. So I hope you guys have an awesome holidays, whether it's Hanukkah, Christmas, nothing, whatever, have good times, um, spend it with family, food, friends, I don't know if you're in Vegas, gambling. And um, I will catch you guys next week. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give my video a thumbs up. Leave me good comments below. Make sure you follow me on social media. And I will catch you guys next time. We're back from dead. Back from the dead, 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 dead.